This video will demonstrate the protocol for lateral augmentation using Augma bone graft cement. Watch the following steps from site preparation to closure. Site preparation. First, we need to design the flap. Mid crestal incision, intracellular, and then one vertical cut that should not exceed the mucogingival line by more than 3 mm. We reflect the flap by introducing the periosteal elevator 3 mm beyond the mucogingival line in all sides. Where we have a defect larger than 3 mm, we go just as much as needed to see the defect, no more. Then continue with a 45 degree angle, 3 mm beyond the mucogingival junction. Now, we grasp the mesial corner of the flap and stretch. Then the middle part of the flap and stretch. Then the distal part of the flap and stretch. Flap reflection of 3 mm beyond the mucogingival junction enables us to stretch about 6 mm due to the elasticity of the mucosa. After the reflection we continue to decortication. We decorticate with a round burr at a 45 degree angle. The burr should be large enough, about 3 mm width. When we decorticate the bone, it is very important to go all the way down through the cortex until the spongy bone to improve the outcome. Now that the site is ready we can activate the bond appetite. Cement Activation We place the syringe in the palm of our hand and start advancing the shaft slowly. As you can see, the liquid from this compartment moves to the other compartment. We continue to slowly advance the shaft until the first piston reaches the line. Now we are ready for grafting. Grafting. We remove the cap with a twisting and pulling motion. Approach the site by placing the syringe at a 45 degree angle in order not to block the aperture of the syringe. Start ejecting the cement into the site. Now, take a dry, unfolded gauze and press strongly from all directions. From the occlusal and buccal direction. It is important to properly compact the material from all directions. We use the periosteal elevator on top of the gauze for 3 seconds to add additional compaction. Remove the gauze. The site is now ready for suturing and closure. Suturing We suture the flap for closure using the following sequence. First stretch the mesial corner and secure it with a suture. Then suture the distal corner. Then the middle. Then in between and finally, suture the vertical incision. We will now demonstrate the suturing sequence. Start with the mesial corner, doing simple sutures. Then the distal corner.
If the material breaks during suturing, take a dry gauze, press for a second and continue to suture. Now, in the middle. Primary closure is not mandatory, however graft exposure of more than 3 mm must be protected with the AUGMA shield. The flap must be with tension, and nothing should be placed between the material and the soft tissue so that the soft tissue is in direct contact with the graft, this is the best way for soft tissue proliferation to take place. Since the flap is minimally reflected, the muscles are not engaged and we can use simple sutures as the flap will not open. Now we suture in between. And finally the vertical incision can be done with simple sutures or continuous sutures. Once the flap is secured it is time to protect the exposed graft with AUGMA shield. Closure AUGMA shield is used to protect the AUGMA graft as soft tissue proliferates above the material. First, use moist gauze to dampen the gums. This allows AUGMA shield to adhere much better. AUGMA shield has a matte appearance and comes attached to a transparent carrier layer. When placed, make sure that AUGMA shield covers the entire exposed area and sits well on the soft tissue. Remove the AUGMA shield from its under layer and place it above the soft tissue and sutures. AUGMA shield adheres to the soft tissue, however it must be secured with sutures so it will stay for a period of 12 to 14 days to enable soft tissue proliferation above the exposed graft. Without suturing, AUGMA shield may fall off after several hours. We will use non- or slow-resorbable sutures and refrain from using fast-resorbable sutures such as chromic gut.
Here is the suture sequence of Ogma shield, start buccally from the mesial to the distal, then palatally from the mesial to the distal, and continue to suture in the same sequence. We will now demonstrate the sequence. Start in the buccal aspect, from the mesial to the distal. Next, move to the palatal aspect, from the mesial through the distal. It is okay if the needle goes through the augma shield in this area, however do not suture through the middle of the augma shield, as this can cause it to tear. Place your first knot. Do not cut the suture's edge. Continue buccally from the mesial to the distal. Then in the palatal area from the mesial to the distal. Continue to suture in the buccal area, from the mesial to the distal. After reaching the end, start from the palatal area, and go back from the distal to the mesial. Then buccally, from the distal to the mesial. Then again in the palatal area, from the distal to the mesial. Again, buccally, from the distal to the mesial. Place a knot here. Postoperative instructions to the patient include avoiding toothpicks in the area and refraining from salt water mouth rinses which will cause the Ogma shield to shrink. Any other mouth rinses are acceptable. To summarize, here are the key points for the lateral augmentation protocol. Site preparation. When reflecting the flap one vertical incision is made no more than 3 mm into the mucosa, then the flap is reflected just enough to expose the entire grafted site. Do not perform periosteal releasing incisions or any soft tissue manipulation to gain tension free. The flap must be with tension. When performing decortication it is necessary to go down through the cortex to the spongy bone. Cement activation. Push the shaft slowly until the first piston reaches the line. Grafting. Place the Ogma bone graft cement in the site, making sure to slightly overfill. Then compact well with a dry gauze for 3 seconds, and add additional compaction with a periosteal elevator. Suturing enclosure. Suture the flap in the following sequence, mesial, distal, middle, in between and finally the vertical incision. Place the Ogma shield and secure it with cross mattress sutures as required. Do not use fast resorbable sutures and do not advise the patient to use salt water for mouth rinses. You can send any clinical question to info at ogmabio.com and we promise to answer shortly. Thank you for watching.